Now, you can't take the action journey of no money to plenty of money instantly. No one can. But you can take the emotional journey from fear of where you are financially to more confidence of where you are financially within a matter of minutes. And when you begin to understand that taking the emotional journey is all that is required for you to begin practicing the art of allowing what you want, then you will discover that this creative endeavor has never been about action and it's never been about words. It's never been about talking your way into something more that you are wanting. It's never been about acting your way into a better position. It's never been about the college degree. It's never been about landing the perfect job. It's never been about the inheritance. It's never been about finding the perfect mate. It's never been about those things that you think it is about. It has only ever been about finding a way right here, right now to feel good about who I am and where I am. You were born adoring you. That's why you sort of said to everyone, here I am, treat me good. <laughs> And if you had just been able to remember that everybody else was doing exactly the same thing, then you wouldn't have expected them to stand on their head to make your world perfect. Although we have to tell you, the entire universe stands on its head to make your world perfect. Every time you ask for anything, no matter how great or small it seems to you or anyone else, it is always given. Every subtle preference or every raging desire Universal forces are lining up circumstances and events to give it to you every single time, no exceptions. So you say, then, where is my stuff? <laughs> and we say, it is being held in escrow for you, waiting for the moment that you align with it. And as long as you're saying, where is my stuff? I see that it's gone. I cannot find it anywhere. I've expected it, but it's not here. My neighbor is getting it. My mother is getting it. My children are getting it. Everybody's getting it, but it's not coming to me. Where is it? I demand to know where it is. We say in your keen awareness that it's not there with you. It cannot come there with you. You might want to start softening those words. You might want to begin taking an emotional journey. Now, here's the key. Taking the emotional journey, not because you're trying to get the stuff. The emotional journey, because it feels better not to worry about not having the stuff than it does to worry about not having the stuff. The emotional journey, because it feels better to anticipate things improving than it does to worry about things not getting better. The emotional journey, because it feels good to love and it feels awful to hate. The emotional journey, because it feels better now. So yes, we do teach selfishness. Because if you are not selfish enough that you care about how you feel now, right now, right now, where all of your power is now, 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 not later, not once the house sells, not once you find a better one, not once your lover cleans up his act, not once people start catering you better, not once your job improves, not once they start appreciating you more, right now, right now where you have all the power. You have the power to tweak your thought process to make you feel better now. And until you decide that that is the work, then you don't understand art of allowing. Art of allowing yourself to be in vibrational alignment with, with the well-being that you deserve. Now you know everything that is important. There isn't anything else that we could ever say to you that would be more important to you than recognizing that you hold the key now to opening the vibrational vortex to allow the emotional journey that will make you feel better now. And when you feel better now, consistently, doors open, circumstances change, and the world caters to you in a way that few of you have realized yet. And those who watch say, who decided that you were the blessed one? <laughs> who anointed you king of the world? How is it that you have only to softly give a thought of preference and next time you turn around, there is an avenue through which it can be fulfilled? And you say, oh, haven't you heard? I am the blessed one. <laughs> Haven't you heard? 
I am the center of the universe. <laughs> Haven't you heard? I only have to ask and then not get in my own way. And it happens to me every single time. So, when you hook into the idea of well-being consciously, that's when things really begin to rip for you in a powerful way. When you say nothing is more important than I feel good, then you always know whether you are facing in the direction of the outcome that you are wanting or whether you have made a turnabout. It does not matter where you have been. The relationship between where you are and where you want to be is important. But where you've been is irrelevant. But when you, in your physical environment, keep talking about where you've been, you keep holding yourself where you've been. So now where you've been and where you are keep turning out to be the same place. When possible, try to find a thought that feels better. Because when you find a thought that feels better, you are back on your course, you say. It's an interesting thing. We watch many of you who are coming more into your conscious awareness of your own vibrational alignment. And there is almost a feeling of resentment when you find other people around you that are making sort of shock waves in your vibration. It's sort of like what you're wanting to say to them is either go away and be a non-vibrating issue in my energy field or get it right. And neither one of those things can happen as long as you've got your eye on them. In other words, you, so you sort of hold to you the very thing that you are not wanting. They have to become, they and what they think have to become a real non-issue to you. And so you can do that. Have you ever been around someone who, maybe it was a child who was making up a complete fantasy, an absolute fabrication about something and you didn't really think that they were going to get a unicorn and, and jump over the moon on it. But they're talking to you about it. And so you just smile and say, that's nice. And you don't try to dash their dreams. You don't try to set them straight. You just, you're willing to let them have their fantasy while you go about whatever you are doing. Well, what you're going to want to do with these people that are trying to hook into your fantasies or your dreams is sort of think about them in the same way that you would that child. Just say, well, that's nice. Don't let what they think be so important to you. Now, how do you go about that? You go about that by letting what you think be the thing that is most important to you. And you say, well, that's sort of how I got here. I want to feel good. They're sort of in there not making me feel good. Why don't they mind their own business and go dream their own dream and, and, and leave me in a place where things can sort of level out? And we want to say to you, powerful creators like yourself will always have others who are sort of following the jet stream. It's just the way that it always is. And it's time for you, sooner than later, to be Become comfortable with whatever they do in relationship to you. And that really is something that you very much want to teach and you very much want to understand is how can I maintain my own vibrational frequency regardless of what anybody else is doing around it? Because the thing that you're wanting to teach, the thing that really needs to be taught, it would benefit anyone who learned it is... Don't ask circumstances to change in order for you to feel good. And so in the same way that you're, you're wanting to not need them to be different in order for you to feel good. We know sometimes very well-meaning people can just make you nuts. And there is this desire to please them that is at the root of you letting that happen. When you release your desire to please them, and first of all, what's behind a desire to please them? Well, it feels good to please them. And it doesn't feel good not to please them. It got started a long time ago. But what's at the root of needing to please someone else is you tried, not just you, almost everyone, you tried to fill the void of your not connection to your inner being by pleasing someone else who could shine a little approval or appreciation on you. In other words, it was sort of a flawed... Um, 
substitute for true connection. And now it's sort of a vicious circle because you're in that habit of trying to please them because it has paid off in some ways in the past, but in trying to please them, you are at the same time sometimes not able to please yourself. We sort of dabbled on this topic earlier, and let's go back to it because it's really an important topic, and it it is the topic of how can I feel so good about who I am that it's all right with me even if somebody's looking at me and they're not approving of who I am. That's ultimate worthiness, isn't it? I like me so much that it no longer matters to me how you feel about me, which means now I'm free from standing on my head to get your approval. But the big payoff is when you really feel that free and you really feel that worthy, you're delicious to be with and everybody who's with you benefits. And you can feel it's just that slight tweaking that you're waiting to get into place. So how do you go about it from where you are? Do you say, buzz off and leave me alone? Well, how does that feel? Now, let's let's talk about this emotional scale. We've been trying to encourage people to reach for the thought that feels a little better. And so when you in your mind, imagine saying something to someone, you can feel whether it's moving you closer to where you want to be or further from where you want to be. So that's the rule of thumb that we would use. In other words, telling them to go away and leave you alone takes you this way on the emotional scale, not this way. Telling them that they're pressuring you takes you this way, not this way. Feeling angry at them for rooting for you takes you this way, not this way. And so anything that you think of that you might say or do to them relative to this subject takes you in the wrong way on the emotional scale, doesn't it? And so then you say, oh, it must not be about them. It must be about me. These emotions that I'm having must be about how I feel about this. In other words, maybe they're just helping through their attention to shine a spotlight on my awareness that I'm not lined up with what I want. That's where your true irritation is coming from, isn't it? In other words, they're just reminding me that I'm not doing what I'm saying I want to do. And so then I'm saying, well, that's because I want the universe to give it to me. And we want to say to you, you're not going to like it very much, but we love saying this to you. If you were in alignment with your dream, the universe would be giving it to you right now. But it's all right for your dream to be an expanding dream. And that's the hard part about co-creating. When you co-create with others, sometimes every time you co-create with someone else, the things that they want get vibrationally factored in. And so it's very important, especially when you are co-creating, that you continue to talk to yourself about what is important to you so that what is important to you becomes the dominant vibration. So now we're going to tell you what's bothering you about all of this. You have not yet, and you're not alone in this, given yourself permission to let what you want be your dominant vibration. Mothers have that a lot. They, they, they care so much more about how their children feel than about how, how they feel. But it happens with everyone. In other words, it's this thing where you care so much about somebody else's well-being. We were visiting with a woman recently who is living in a place that she is really not very happy. She, she bought a condominium. And there are all kinds of rules and restrictions that were not completely appealing to her. And she moved in before she'd really thought it all through. But the excuse she's using to leave a place she doesn't really want to be is that the rule says the cat has to stay indoors all the time. And so as we chatted with her, it became clear that she cares more about serving the cat's desires than she does about serving her own. Because if it were not for the cat, she'd put up with it. But because the cat wants it differently. And what we are suggesting is that a lot of you are that way, where you'll do things for others that you will not do for yourself. And that's really what this is all about. You have to get selfish enough that you care really, really keenly about how you feel. And when you do, everything else will take care of itself.